Hello, in this video we're going to show you how to send data to an online server in Cocos 2DX C++. Even though you're sending data, you can receive data as well, so you don't need to do multiple requests to get and receive data, which is fantastic, and it's going, going to be using the POST request. First of all, make sure you've got your project set up for networking in C++. If you don't, don't worry. In this series, there is a video which covers setting up your project. Once you've done that, just specify the request URL. For me, I already have an online server and it's got a file called post.php on Sonar Learning. You're more than welcome to use this file as well. And though I'm doing PHP on the server side, it doesn't really matter what language you do online because as long as you do the correct code for the server side, that's fine because this video isn't really about the server side, it's more about the client side, aka what you're doing on your phone or what the user is doing on their phone. And once you've set the URL, the next thing that you need to set is the request type. So just do request, set request type, that's it right there, for Cocos 2D network colon colon HTTP request colon colon type colon colon and just set that to post press semicolon as we don't want any unwanted errors next we need to actually set our data that we're sending so do request set request data this takes two parameters the buffer which is essentially a string of what data you're sending though it has to be actually it's it's a uh, char array basically but it's a, you can think of it as a string. It's a string, but you can put numbers in there, that's fine as well. And the length is the length of the string. So to actually make this simple, I'm going to do underscore underscore string, because this will make it dynamic as well. And I'm going to call this data to send equals underscore underscore string, colon colon create, going to create it with a format and the format for sending data online is like this the name of the data you're sending so you can think of this like a variable because I've named data to the data to send as the with the name data to send you can think of it as the same as that so what name do we want to specify I'm just going to keep it simple call it data one next you assign it a value like you're assigning a variable of value I want to assign it the number 45 and that's it and in here where are we here we go you would do on you do data to send and you'll give you an error in a moment and the reason the error is occurring expected expression blah 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 so what you need to do is actually get the string value so uh, get C string and now you need the length to get the length just do data to send length so there we go we've got the request data set up the beauty of doing it like this you could obviously use a c++ string object if you want to but the beauty of using a, a good quality string object is that we can easily let's say rename this to data one two three but the length of this has changed but we don't need to do anything else here because it automatically automatically gets the length. This is very beneficial if you're adding more variables which will or more pieces of data which we'll show you later in this video. So now that we've got this all set up we are going to actually get some data from our server because otherwise we don't know that we've successfully sent it and to do that first of all we're going to do hash include vector scroll down and just go to your on HTTP request completed and what you want to do is just do std vector and the class that we need in here is a char let's call it asterisk buffer equals response get response data we need to do printf and we're going to do 
get data from server. <coughs> Sorry about that. I'm a little unwell at the moment. Colon. And now what we're going to do is loop through our vector, which is the response that we get from the server. So we need unsigned int equals zero. I less than buffer size and I plus plus. So what's it moaning about? Oh, haven't put a variable name there. So there we go. I. And then in, in here, I'm simply going to do print f percent c ah quotation marks keep forgetting them now for this just put bracket bracket buffer and now put square bracket i so we're just getting a particular character at a particular index and finally we're going to do print f Backslash and we'll do it a couple more times just so there's a gap between the rest of the code Even though we're just printing it out you could easily store this into a string you could easily just say store into a string pass it as a number it's very simple stuff That's all for the most part just C++ basics So this is all ready to run but before we actually run it because at the moment we wouldn't get anything actually I'll run it And I'll show you what happens it's not like it's going to crash or anything, actually, I hope not. We, if the coding is all successful in Cocos 2 dx it won't crash or anything. It's just because we're not returning any data yet from our server, we'll just get an empty response. So if I just don't really care about simulator, just want it to boot up and get some log. Okay, there we go. All the stuff has printed out get data from server is empty simply because we haven't done anything with our server yet so I'm just gonna put some basic code here I'm just going to do dollar underscore post now the name of our data so it's data one actually I need to find this to a variable so I'm gonna call it var one equals data one and we're simply going to echo dollar var one plus seven and save that that's saved we are passing over the value 45 so it should and will return the number 52 because we're adding seven to it there you go we've got 52 so imagine if let's say we wanted to change this number just so you can see it is working 34 plus 7 is 41 and that is the response that we'll get from the server 41 so you might be wondering on the server side do we have to return something that's to do with the variable no you could let's say imagine if this was a user score you could validate the user score if it's a high score you could save it to a mysql database and then just return true or false just to let us know or the application know that it has or hasn't successfully posted it and maybe some other error response code saying why it hasn't maybe it's not a high score and the application would do something accordingly but what I'm going to do is show you how to send multiple pieces of data so I'm going to send a number you can easily just chain this to a string if you wanted to but I'm just dealing with numbers because we can easily and quickly manipulate them on the server side so let's leave this as 34 if you want to add another piece of data put ampersand the data name so I'm going to put data 2 and for this I'm going to put equals to 100 and what we're going to do save that go to here let's copy and paste this change this to var 2 change this to 2 and we're going to simply return the sum of var1 and var2 which is data1 and data2 and it should now print out 134 so if we just wait for this to generate build just run in our application there you go it says 134 because it got the data from or you got the pieces of information from both the 
pieces of data that we sent, added it together and it returned it. So this is a simple example, it sets you up for pretty much anything that you want to do in terms of sending and retrieving data from a server you have access to. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on our education platform, sonarlearning.co.uk forward slash question.php. There'll be a link in the description to that. Plus, there'll be another link in the description to the source code from this video and the source code from every other video in this series. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, comment and hit that subscribe button as it really does help us. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.